first of all, again, I'd like to congratulate Shimon Cohen for making these translations and making available worldwide this English translation of, of these very important texts from Victor Frankl, specifically texts that focus on spirituality. So my presentation, I will try to emphasize some aspects of Victor Franklin's writings that were translated in this new book that uh, talks specifically more in detail about spirituality. But to start, it's inter interesting to, to discuss uh, what are the current, what is the current evidence regarding some of the main uh, Frankl's claims that is the impact and the importance of meaning of life for mental health. What is the evidence for that? And also, what is the evidence of the impact of spirituality or religiosity to mental health and also to the meaning of life? Just to, to start, uh, we can see here a recent uh, study investigating almost 7,000 uh, older Americans that were followed up for four years. And they investigated if having a strong sense of life purpose could be a predictor of general mortality. What is most amazing is that even controlling for several sociodemographic and even clinical factors like age, sex, educational level, race, smoking status, physical activity, alcohol consumption, all of this, even controlling for all these variables, people compared to people who had a higher sense of life purpose, meaning of life, those who had lower levels died three times more. So there is a huge impact in, high, in having life, life purpose. So there was a three times increase in mortality in those people who had lower levels of meaning of life. The second very important data on this subject, this is what has been called deaths of despair. This is a term that, was, that has been proposed by Angus Ditton. Angus Ditton is an uh, economist who is a Nobel laureate who has showed the important increase of what he called death of despair, that are deaths related to suicide and specifically to alcohol and other drug use. So because drug use, alcohol abuse, and suicide uh, are strongly related to despair, to lack of meaning, lack of hope. And these are some data that he published at the Proceedings of National Academy of Science a few years ago, showing in the last two decades, a major increase, a huge increase in death by poisoning, specifically with drugs or alcohol, an increase of suicidal deaths, and also increase of chronic liver disease, often related to alcohol. So there has been a major increase in these deaths of despair in the United States, specifically among men. And then even a more recent study published by a group from Harvard University two years ago at the American Medical Association, the Journal of the American Medical Association. This is a very big study involving more than 100,000 people that have been followed up for about 15 years. And they investigate also the deaths of despair. Okay. This first, uh, they found basically people who attended religious services at least once a week, they had three times lower levels of mortality compared to those who did not attend. So we can see here in some sense, the impact of religious involvement in the 
a marked decrease of likelihood of death of despair. And probably one of the mediators of this is that higher levels of religious involvement is related to higher levels of meaning of life. So these are just some more recent data uh, bringing us very high level evidence regarding some of the key ideas of Vitor Frankl. And also regarding spirituality, the impact of spirituality that we'll discuss uh, now regarding Vitor Frankl. Uh, th this is uh, the major uh, findings that we have for more than 3,000 empirical studies investigating the impact of religious and spiritual involvement on health and mental health. We, as was uh, stated at the beginning of our talk by Paul, we have just uh, edited a book that has been published by Oxford University Press this year. It's called Spirituality and Mental Health Across Cultures. We have put together more than 30 authors from 11 different countries, summarizing the best scientific evidence nowadays and the clinical implications of this. And on average, the evidence shows that higher levels of religious and spiritual involvement is related to lower general mortality, lower levels of depression, suicidal behavior, substance use and abuse, and higher levels of quality of life, well-being, meaning of life, and human flourish. Of course, there are also some negative impacts of religion and spirituality when people have a negative use of spirituality in negative religious coping or extrinsic religious. We will talk a bit more, more about this later in Franco's works. Okay, so now let's move to some of the main ideas of Victor Franco regarding spirituality. And I, I based on, I, I'm basing my talk on these four texts that are in the book that were translated by Shimon. And here are the abbreviations that we are using uh, on that. So first we start as, uh, as we know that uh, Vitor Frankl emphasized very much freedom and responsibility. And he, um, he uh, called us to be aware of the risks of psychologism, biologism, or and sociologism that are deniers of human freedom. If we claim that uh, uh, psychological aspects can explain everything of human beings or biological aspects or social aspects that we have no freedom because we would be determined by our psychological drives or our social environments. And it's very important also to be aware of the view of man and the word view implications embedded in a given psychotherapeutic approach because very often this world views, sometimes these ideologies are present to us as scientific evidence, as science, and this is not the case. This is, for example, some of these uh, reductionist perspectives of human beings, the very uh, materialist reductionist views of human beings, views that deny our uh, freedom. Of course, he recognized that we are influenced by these factors, but we are not determined, determined by these factors. And actually, he says in the end that being responsible is the meaning of human existence. So this core, the core idea that we, are, we have the freedom to be above and beyond these, these factors, sociological, psychological, and biological factors, but we can be we can be beyond them. We can uh, we are influenced by them, but we can we can we are not determined by them. And because of this, we are, of this we are free. We have freedom and we have responsibility. This is the, one of the core ideas of the the meaning of human being. On the other side, he he, he tell us that uh, he proposed a dialectical twist regarding the meaning of life. Uh, we should not ask what is the meaning of life? Because actually it's life itself which asks the person. In every situation, 
each situation, we are asked by life, what is the meaning? And in making our choices, we tell what is the meaning for us. Uh, and there is always the possibility for us uh, to make choices, even if we cannot change the situation, we can change our attitudes, the way we suffer, the way we cope with the challenges of life. But also it's very important, as uh, Franco said, that we should remember about the freedom from below, freedom from this instinctual drive for the biological factors, freedom from below, but also we need to remember that we have freedom to above, freedom to go beyond this, uh, the, 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 act, the circumstance, circumstance that we are now and seek a greater meaning and greater goal. And one of these greater goals is exactly the self-actualization. And uh, it is important to understand also in, the, in Franco's perspective, the self-actualization is also should not also be a goal in itself. It's possible only to the extent that I lose myself, forget myself, devote myself to an ideal or person. Self-actualization, like happiness, is the byproduct of fulfillment of an ethical value, a self-transcendent value. And now moving more directly to the religious and spiritual aspects, he calls us the homo religious. Uh, and one of the main cores of the homo religious is that the homo religious sees, sees experience life not only as a task, but as a mission, a mission given by God. So in this idea and seeing or experience life as a mission given, a personal mission given by God, it has major psychotherapeutic implications because it provides a strong sense of meaning, of purpose that help us to cope uh, uh, with the challenges of life and also to foster self-actualization. And also the Omer religious experience the giver of this meaning also. And he also claims that it's not possible to provide a definitive rational demonstration of God, but it's possible to get a phenological demonstration of God because of the metaphysical need of God. Uh, people find a, a love, a need for a love that finds no satisfaction in anything which is found within this world. So this need would be fulfilled only by God. And also another very important aspect that uh, Franco uh, calls us to, to remember this, specifically at his time where when was much less frequent to talk about spirituality in medicine, spirituality in psychotherapy. Uh, uh, it's very good to, to realize that the last decades Psychologists, psychiatry um, uh, have accepted much more nowadays the importance of spirituality. But he says that the man is much more religious than he suspects. And it's important to understand that we are not only suppressed drives, but also we have unconscious spirituality, unconscious morality, and unconscious faith. And as we said previously, uh, when the homo religious experience life as a God-given personal mission, it can raise the consciousness of responsibility to a degree that is eminently significant psychotherapeutically. As we had, as, as we have shown previously in this, in the current robust evidence showing the impact of spirituality uh, on mental health. This is a major factor. Just to give another example about the impact of spirituality on mental health, there is a large study uh, with more than 80,000 people followed up for 14 years in the United States. And even after controlling for many clinical and sociodemographic variables, 
those people who attended the religious service at least once a week died six times less from suicide during this follow-up, six times. We probably don't have any other protective factor that is so strong as this. So it, it's, it's very important how important it is. And this is also important because this is also a byproduct because the major goal of a truly religious person is not the, just to get mental health. People get involved, truly involved with religion because of this need to, to, to seek God and to, to, to try to follow the image of God. And by, as a byproduct, there is, for example, this impact on mental health. This is exactly what he says here in types of religious com com commitment. It's very similar to what with Gordon Alport, that was a psychologist in Harvard also proposed. Gordon Alport, by the way, had strong connections with Franklin. Franklin cites quite often Alport, and Alport has proposed two ways, two major ways of religious commitment. One is extrinsic religiosity, and the other is intrinsic religiosity. The intrinsic religiosity is the way to approach religiosity to take advantage of it, to just select few aspects that are comfortable to me. And the intrinsic religiosity is when the person really tries to or, and strive to live a deeply the religious uh, life. As Alpert said, the extrinsically motivated person lives to be served by God. On the other side, the intrinsically motivated the religious person is, lives to serve God. It's exactly what Franklin says here. The superficially religious people, that would be the extrinsic religious person, wants only to ensure himself for the eventuality that there is a God and a beyond, calculating or weighting accounts. It's exactly different from the truly religious person that's much more preoccupied with being accountable and being responsible for fulfilling the God given in life. And also regarding spirituality, Franco says that logotherapy is open. And indeed, its hallmark is its openness to the theological dimension. It's very important. This is a hallmark of logotherapy. And the idea that we are, as Franco said, responsible before our conscious. conscious. However, the point is, is conscience. The end of the line of the psyche is the ultimate point or is the penultimate authority. There is something, some, something beyond. And Franco himself proposed that there is God. God is the source of our ethical values of our conscience, our conscience. However, uh, of course, we cannot impose these ideas on the patient. And Franco said, I believe that this before whom we stand is a suprapersonal being. And he, Franco, believed in the objectivity of truth and the objectivity of ethical imperative. They are not just relative uh, constructions, human constructions. And exactly because of that, he also uh, points to the, uh, to the dangers of psychologists. Because psychologists project values of the spiritual realm onto the mental plane, because the spiritual realm would be beyond the, the mental plane. And if you project this on this lower plane, we can make confusions. For example, we can no longer distinguish the visions of a Bernadette in Lourdes and the hallucinations of a historical woman. And in a different book, The Will to Meaning, Franco proposed this a uh, very illustrative image. We have three dimensional figures like um, a cylinder, a cone, and also a spheric ball. So but, but if these three dimensional uh, figures, objects, solid objects are projected in a two dimensional plane 
all of them will be very similar. They will be just a circle. But they are very, very different objects. So it's the same happens when we project the spiritual realm only on the mental plane. So for example, the visions of Bernadette will be very similar to the hallucinations of hysterical woman. Also, the conscience becomes superego or the interjection of the father image and God becomes the projection of this image. Because of course, we can have neurotic uh, views of spirituality, but it's not necessarily that all religious is neurotic, for example. And regarding, moving to the, more to the end, what, is, what about the ultimate nature of person? He claims that every person is absolutely unique. It's a new person created by God. And the person is spiritual, but it needs its organism to be able to act and express itself in this physical world. As a tool, the organism is a means to an end. So the spiritual being uses the organism and the psychophysical uh, instruments as tools to manifest itself in this regular life. And based on this, that is the first aspect of the psychiatric credo that he calls the belief in the persistence of the spiritual person, even behind the foreground symptoms of a psychotic illness, even when there are se severe impairment in the brain functioning. Despite that, the spiritual being, the spiritual person is still whole, trying to communicate through uh, impaired uh, mechanisms. And because of that, also we can assure the dignity of the person despite the limitations or even the severe uh, damages and injuries of the physical body. And also, he has the second psychotherapeutic credo the belief in the ability of the soul without the human under all conditions and circumstances to pull back from its psychophysical dimensions and to assume a distance from it and then make choices despite all this situation. And he said, in as much as the person can distance and elevate itself from the psychophysical, does the spiritual emerge into manifestation. It can go beyond this psychophysical manifestation. And now, regarding the ultimate nature of person, what death can tell us about this? He says that in death, the total loss of the psychophysical I, but all that remains is the self, the spiritual self remains, even after the loss of the psychophysical I. And so death awakens, awakes us to a more authentic, to a more real reality of ourselves. And only when the person is grasped as intrinsically spiritual, is it lifted out of the mortality of the psychophysical. The idea that we go beyond the death of the body. Okay. By the way, this is one, one of the my research areas, and we will publish uh, the mid of this year at, by the, the publisher Springer, a, call, a book called The Science of Afterlife, discussions, scientific discussions on this. So finally, regarding the approach, how can we approach the patient's spirituality? First, we as therapists, we must instill the sense of freedom responsibility of me. This is the core of logotherapy. We instill the sense of freedom, responsibility of me. And as we see, we saw previously, according to Frankl, the spiritual aspect of human beings is that one that warrants the freedom. 
and then generates responsibility. However, we must keep a strict neutrality regarding what is the meaning of life of each person, or even if the person will find some spiritual meaning, some religious meaning in his or her life. However, even if we should keep a strict neutrality, existential analysis should not block the door to transcendence, like many other psychotherapeutic approaches block the door, shut the door to transcendence. The door should remain open for people to go out of spirituality or to go in back to spirituality. Frankl also called for cooperation between the doctor and the clergyman. There is no antagonism between a religious approach and a non-religious therapeutic approach. They can be, they can make an addition, a cooperation. And then we, we, we should explore the spirituality of our patients. However, we need to be aware that the intimate religious life resist gratuitous exposure and exhibition. We need to be very sensitive, very careful, patient-centered in this approach, never imposing our religious or anti-religious beliefs. And it's interesting that he said that we cannot prescribe meaning. However, it's sufficient simply to stop blocking the process of discovery of meaning. Because as we are usually homo religious, we are really usually very prone to spirituality. If, if we start to discuss meaning in these more deep aspects of life, usually spirituality is brought by the patient. But the problem is when our psychotherapeutic approach or our educational approach blocks spirituality. For example, he, he says in a very uh, strong way, direct way. Uh, stops preaching that God is nothing but, nothing but a father image and religion nothing but a collective obsession on neurosis. Also, I uh, stop teaching models of human being that undermines the normal orientation to moral purpose, the idealism which young people naturally process. Stop preaching that we are just animals, just naked apes. Stop preaching that we are just uh, generated by conditioned behavior or just uh, produced by our instinctual drives, or we are just product of um, the social and economic force that we are in. So it calls us to stop doing this. And it and also is important because, as I said previously, if we start to discuss these topics, usually uh, the patient brings uh, naturally these topics of spirituality very often. And the effect of a religious answer to the ultimate questions of the patient about the meaning of existence is generally much deeper when this answer is not given quasi lectured by the doctor but when the patient alone can say it to him or herself. So it's very interesting that uh, Frankl says that even without intending religion, as we see it, we, we saw previously, may contribute to mental health. But also in the other way around, psychotherapy may prompt religious of patients just by start discussing these deeper aspects of meaning and of life. And finally, the ultimate self-actualization. According to Vito Frankl, the person is to be understood finally as the likeness of God. The human can comprehend him or herself only from the perspective of the transcendence. So the most important way to understand us is the likeness of God and the perspective of transcendence beyond the psychotheistical aspect. The human is human only insofar as he grasps himself in relation to God. 
the conscious is the registry of transcendence. The true discovery of the human, the invention hominis, occurs in imitatio day, the imitation of God. So the self actualization is the true discovery of human being comes from this. So this is, uh, here I stop finishing these major ideas of uh, Vitor Frankl in this book, in this translation. So it's very good that nowadays psychiatry, this is the position statement from the World Psychiatric Association, the position statement directing psychiatrists all over the globe to taking in consideration spirituality of patients in teaching, research, and clinical practice. So this is a guideline for the 3,000 psychiatrists around the globe. And this uh, position statement is available in different languages, so it can be found uh, for free. So in here are also some my contacts for those who'd like to contact me later. Thank you very much. <laughs>